Today on The Rundown, we're talking about Generation Z. You mean Centennials? Yeah, whatever. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us on The Rundown. I am Scott. I'm Christy. And today we're talking about Generation Z. Or Centennials. No, Whichever well, way you want to go. Yeah. Well, I thought it was Generation Z, from what well, I've been reading. Now, see, MTV saying it's the founding, founder generation. That's weird. You know, you've got other people saying that they're Generation Z. You've got people saying iGen. Well, there's, there's lots of names being thrown around. Heck, they didn't even know we were millennials up until recently. So we just, okay, so we're right now like in this weird phase on what to call this Pretty new much. group of young buyers. Yeah. Um, so, like, what age group do they fit in? Well, so far they're saying roughly the mid to late 90s, which is, uh, the reason for that is because it's, you can't be in the new generation unless you are, can actually not remember 9-11, supposedly. Oh, really? So it goes from that up into rec as recent as, you know, 2015. It's so you're looking at the highest being like 19, 20 year olds and then, you know, all the way down to like your daughter's age. Right. So she's like four right now. So, so that's incredible. So 9-11 is the big... Yep, yeah, that is the determining is, factor. Is the determining factor. Like, of, they're saying that what makes this generation unique is they are, um, they, they don't know anything other than, like, social media. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything other than diversity. You know, they remember a black president as being their first president. Mm -hmm. They remember, you know, gay rights at this point. You know, so they're all about diversity. They don't know anything else other than, you know, oh, Facebook. You know, that's mm -hmm. a great example. Uh, something I saw recently, the guy was talking about how he goes on a lot of uh, out-of-town trips and stuff, so he always calls his daughter at night. Mm -hmm. She does not understand the idea of a telephone call, really, at this point, because she's three and a half, uh, the example at least, and doesn't know anything about a phone call without seeing a face. I mean, the first phone call she remembers wasn't a phone call at all. It was a FaceTime. And so that's the way she's growing up. You know, these people, are, they don't know anything other than Facebook and these new apps. So it's, it's really interesting. And that's what's determining that particular generation. I, that is so different from how I grew up. Because I can remember a time when there was no internet. You yeah, know, I, I like, too. and I, I can remember the first day when my dad brought home a CD-ROM, like the actual CD-ROM, to actually install into the computer because it didn't come with the CD-ROM. And I remember thinking that was so cool. And so having that perspective in a way that other people, I mean, th these kids have no idea what life was like before that. And so it, it's a very connected, very digital, de like dependent generation to where they're going to make decisions and purchases not based on like filtering it through some sort of lens that allows us to, you know, judge brands and companies in a way that that we did, you know, mm -hmm. features and benefits, you know, centric. And you, they're going to be expecting something a little bit more and a little yeah. bit more connected into their lives. Yeah, exactly. They are no longer, they're not like us where we were the pioneers of mm -hmm. the internet. They just expect technology and things just to work and function and then go above and beyond. So I know that this expectation for, for, technology to serve your, their lives mm -hmm. uh, to, to actually impact how they decide what brands to support. Yes. Right? And a lot of people, there's a lot of talk around there about like Instagram, like, like uh, Generation Z is really, not Instagram, sorry, uh, Snapchat. So Generation mm -hmm. Z is really into Snapchat, but peop, that Snapchat is really just like a, a technology for us to experiment with and see how it's going to innovate and how people interact with brands on that, that, that medium. And what we can see right now with <clears throat> Generation Z is that just creating tailored content mm -hmm. and uh, participative type of you know uh, experiences online aren't really going to drive home for these guys. They want something a little bit more substantial than even us as us millennials have experienced in the past. Correct. Like they don't see this uh, those apps and things as like just a social experience. That's just what they do instead of getting on the phone with your friends like we did when we were younger or meet them at the park that's how they're making friends they don't know anything else other than oh that's just what you do mm -hmm. so they don't see it as a platform for selling and all this other stuff yet that we're looking at it just because we're coming from a complete different perspective mm -hmm. from the past and well like, it, it's it's challenging marketers and advertisers to be a little bit more creative in how they bridge the line between digital and physical Correct. Okay, you can never really translate that experience that's digital into the physical world and how you approach Generation Z into uh, really getting behind a, a product or a brand really depends upon uh, 
<clears throat> getting them to experience it firsthand. For example, Gatorade debuted a, uh, a campaign or that they're going to start launching in uh, 2017. You're going to start seeing it, but they debuted it at South by Southwest, and it allows uh, people to go online and to design their own uh, bottles of water or sports drinks. And that was a really creative way to bridge the gap between digital and, uh, and, and the physical world. That's like taking Coca-Cola's name thing and taking it to another level. Like, mm -hmm. Rather than making it personal for actually our age group, that's actually integrating the, the next generation Mm -hmm. And doing what what that was for us for them. Mm -hmm. That's and, really cool. Yeah, and I see I see something uh, just happening right now. Is that Generation Z is moving past uh, just okay? So there's been a lot of talk in the branding world uh, in the years past about companies having uh, what is it purpose statements, yes. right? Like the yeah. purpose of a company, and. A lot of times, they, those purpose statements were isolated uh, to that own company. And so that means that there's a little bit of arrogance attached to those purpose statements, value mm -hmm. statements. And it was force fed. I mean, mm -hmm. it was given to, this is, this is what we're about, rather than us finding out for ourselves. Now mm -hmm. companies are having to do that because the, the tweens and nowadays, there's like, oh, was that, that's what you say, huh? Well, I'm going to go ahead and see what all my friends think. I'm going to see what other people are saying about you. And if they don't coincide, I'm not buying your product. And so they're, they're to the point now that instead of listening to mm -hmm. the companies, they're going to listen to uh, the people that are leaving reviews and trust that before they trust that a large corporation. That is where the YouTube sensations and bloggers are coming into play. A lot of these large organizations are having to rely on these outlets to get people of this new generation to connect because otherwise you're not going to believe them. They're not, they're not going to make that connection. So it's crazy how much money they're investing into these bloggers and, and inst uh, big Instagrammers and you know YouTube sensations. Yes, it, going along the line with this YouTube sensation okay. craze, th there's Generation Z is kind of unique in that they understand what sponsored content is. Yes, they understand and they're kind of okay with it. So like. There's a YouTube channel, it's Awesomeness TV, and they have a show on there called Royal Crush. And what Royal Crush is, is, is the story, it's in its fourth season, incredibly. So Royal Crush um, is about two teens, get on a cruise ship, they fall in love, things like that. I haven't seen the show. Okay. Right? I haven't. <laughs> well, we uh, aren't Gen Z, so I mean, clearly. But, but what it is, is, is the entire show takes place on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, okay. and it's for Royal Caribbean. It's one big advertisement. And it's in this fourth season. It's doing really well. And when Awesomeness TV uh, did a study with Nielsen, they found that it was 30% more effective with their target market, which was Generation Z, than traditional video advertising. Yep and uh, engagement. They so need a story. They, they need a story that, that connects with them. And if it takes the form of paid to sponsor content, then, then they're okay with that. But what you were saying about, hey, you company, you know, you large company, you large brand, you say you're about one thing, let me check up on you. Mm -hmm. This thing, brands are having, look, look, if you're concerned about your brand and your brand is going to impact, you think you're gonna enter into Generation Z, uh, you got to watch out. So five years from now, they're start. They're going to start having really expendable cash available to purchase stuff, mm -hmm. and they are very, very concerned that and, and aware on if a brand does actual good. That where in the past, brands could just put out a uh, "this is who we are" a purpose statement, and everybody yeah. just generally agrees with it. They brands have to actually demonstrate that they support that, that their goals align with what Generation Z is. And it's not just goals aligning. They expect brands to actually participate and help Gen Z accomplish those aspirational goals. Yep. And it's really interesting. Their values are very different than the millennials. They came up in an area in a time where all they know is war. They know mm. of the recession. And they know and see how mm -hmm. hard it was for their parents uh, to get out of the recession and dealing with financial financial burden. A lot of these uh, tweens, teens, you know, generation X or yeah, Z years, excuse me, uh, are, are coming out and, and thinking about fiscal responsibility. They want to make sure that, that what they're paying for has got value, which where a lot of the need for a story, a, a back piece, you know, a, an honest good goodness for these companies to, to come from. Um, this is 77%, uh, just so you know, 77% of 12 to 17-year-olds have a smartphone. 
Okay. Right? So as brands are putting out stuff, you need to think about mobile. And this is also, oh, crap. 60% of them, I think, oh, crap. Hang on. I have to check our notes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, 20, <laughs> it's 26 of the population, and then 60 million of them in the United States. So as you said, about five years, that's a lot of freaking uh, consumers out on the market. So mm -hmm. it's really cool. Well, the this this whole thing about it, it used to be the you you do the features and the benefits, and and that is it. And now companies have are expected by Generation Z to actually enter into the culture, to actually yep. enter into the campaign. All right, when when the topic of race became very big here in 2016, Starbucks jumped into the conversation. However, yes. you view the conversation, the fact is is that Starbucks jumped into the culture and actually participated in it. That's an excellent example of brands actually entering in and proving their value. Hey, this is who yes. we are. Right, yes. and this, and we're going to help you actually express yourself. Now, it's very easy with consumer goods and and drinks and food and things like that. But how can companies? How can your company? And this will be a big question, a big point for companies moving here up, up out into the future, is how are you proving that you do and that you support what you say that you do and support? And as a brander, I love this. This is like my favorite topic because branding really is what like tying what you say about yourself to what you do and yep. people with the mobile and the apps are going to tell if you are being genuine and if you're if you're just answering the question what's in it for my brand right they're going to be able to sense that so for brands you really have to focus on how can I join in to their world and have what interests do we share and how can I how can I connect how can I connect yes. yep. With that, one last thing uh, is the big thing with moving with technology is instead of having all the way, all right, I mean, I'm going to back up. Okay. Backing up. Backing up. Remember back in the, when the turn of the century, turn of the century, <laughs> when oh, websites were the big thing. Yeah. And our age group has looked at, and now if you go online, you're looking for something and want to purchase something, and you see a website looks like it was done in 2002, typically we're not going to buy from it. Well, same thing kind of goes for that generation as well. Our websites are now their apps. That is a great way to look at it. Yes, yes. it is. And so the thing that a lot of people huh. are now looking at is how can I make an app that is relevant, mm -hmm. uh, cost effective, and still is, stays with the times and can connect with those, uh, I keep saying, calling them millennials. It, it's so hard. <laughs> the world has, yeah, the generation's years. The world has revolved around millennials for so long. Well, now when you start talking about I've looked it up. Z. For a really decent looking uh, application, you can spend between $15 and $50 a month and something that's called here, appypie.com. Appypie. Yep, and they go ahead, they build it. It's just like building a website like on Wix or any of these other like just plug and chug mm -hmm. kind of, kind of uh, web creators. So it's easy for anyone to use. You put in your content, you type it in, they have pictures for you to place in, in wherever you want to put it. They're like, oh, do you need a button that uh, orders pizza? Or do you need a button that shows a store? You can go ahead and add it really easily. And then they go ahead and create a mobile website for you too. All for, you know, pennies on the dollar. Yeah. So there's things out there for you to use as a business. Be like, okay, I need to jump on this. Let's go out there and look for it. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. Well, there is. This is just touching the surface yes. of Generation Z and what we're going to learn about them, exactly. and how we're going to interact with them. It's going to be very cool. I know I say this like at every rundown, but I really <laughs> am excited about the future of how Generation Z is going to going to impact brands and and how culture is going to adapt. I, I think agree. I think it's going to be a really good time for people that are concerned about their brand, and uh, I think companies really need to start reevaluating where they are. And how they're going to interact with this company, and also get apps. Get get an yes. app. Get an app. Uh, now I looked it up. It's not hard, and it'll really boost your business, and it'll set you up to be in the right direction for the future. With minimal investment. Minimal investment is always good. Yep. Well, until we figure out exactly what we're going to call them, <laughs> we'll we'll say this is it for this uh, edition of the rundown. Yeah. Thank you for listening or watching. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm Christy. And if you have any. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or any suggestions on what we should go ahead and talk about in future rundowns, please hit us up on Twitter. It's at Ferrari Group. As always, uh, we'll see you next time on The Rundown.